Welcome in everybody to the um, Landry Football Podcast Network. As we got a little group of five live for you as we break down uh, the key games in the group of five this week five in the college football season. We got BYU Utah State on Thursday night as we're taping this show. We'll get you ready for that. How about the red hot middle Tennessee Blue Raiders at Johnny Red Floyd Stadium in Murfreesboro hosting Friday night? Texas San Antonio, an intriguing matchup with the, red, the uh, Middle Tennessee squad coming off the big win over Miami. How about Houston and Tulane? Tulane with the big win over Kansas State. Houston underachieving thus far uh, in uh, TDECU Stadium in Houston, Texas. We're going to get into that. Boise State, can they get off the mat at home in Albertson Stadium in Boise against San Diego State? Uh, UNLV, New Mexico, that is a, a late Friday matchup in Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Uh, New Mexico and UNLV. So we've got a couple of other games that we're going to try to get to as well, but uh, we're going to focus on those today and we're going to get the rest for you over at LandryFootball.com so you can check out the detailed film room analysis there. Um, We'd like to ask you to subscribe, like, and share the Landry Football Podcast Network. Uh, We'd also like to ask you to subscribe, like, and share on the Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel. So it is an interesting week in the group of five as we're getting into the time of year where we're going to have pretty much all conference games. So with a few exceptions, we're going to be looking at the best group of five versus group of five. Well, we've seen some games that were against power five teams, which were intriguing the first four weeks of the season. Now we're getting into a little bit of what I call the the challenges. So for a team like BYU that lost the game, against Oregon, um, their schedule has a chance to be pretty gaudy because they don't play the Power 5 teams anymore. They've, they've got a Utah State team in an in a, uh, interstate game. It's one of those games that you don't necessarily throw out the records, but Utah State always brings a little something extra when they get to deal with the guys from Provo. They go to Provo, and it's been a rough last few weeks to be nice about it, but there's enough of a passing game to at least – challenged the Cougars a little bit in this game. The defensive front hasn't really generated much of a pass rush, but it gets behind the line. Uh, it creates some takeaways. There have been seven thus far, um, and, you know, not getting any in last week's loss to UNLV. And um, Utah State's having its problems, and it starts with the turnovers. The offense has to press with all the problems it's having getting anything going. And when you have to press, mistakes come. The positive is that there weren't any real turnovers. Um, against Alabama in that blowout loss to the Tide. Uh, there were 12 uh, in the other three games, including 10 over the last two games. BYU is not taking the ball away, but this is a game to start generating more turnovers and big plays. The Cougars line should take over right away. The defense should stuff pretty much whatever the Utah State offense wants to do on the ground. Uh, the Utah State secondary is about to get hard, I think, in this game. It wasn't totally awful against Alabama, but it was still hammered. And it hadn't been a disaster. But Jaron Hall and the BYU passing game is playing very well. And I think that regardless who's out at receiver, and they've been missing parts, they're going to throw the football. The offense is averaging for BYU close to 300 yards per game through the air, 10 scores. Uh, Utah State hadn't allowed anyone to hit 70%. I I think that's going to change this week. It's a 24-point line. It's an over and under of 60. Uh, We've got some thoughts over at Landry Football where we may go with this. That's a lot of points, but I think BYU rolls in this one, no doubt. Uh, Texas San Antonio plays Middle Tennessee. Uh, The Texas San Antonio team continues to play well. Uh, even if it's not having the results it enjoyed last year in its Conference USA Championship season, the two losses were out of conference. So there's plenty of time to get everything right. It starts here with one key part of its game. Um, turnovers have got us come down a bit. I uh, thought they played pretty well against Texas. Middle Tennessee has been a menace at taking the ball away the last few seasons. Um, it's doing a really good job this year with nine forced turnovers of the last three games, including three in that stunning win over Miami, Florida Hurricanes last week. Uh, Texas San Antonio um, doesn't mess up a whole lot. Frank Harris is a strong veteran quarterback. He does a really good job getting his team the right play, doesn't force his throws. 
Uh, the offense has turned it over just four times in four games, and it might be enough to push Middle Tennessee's defense that's strong but gives up lots of passing yards. Um, Middle Tennessee wasn't on anybody's radar after getting destroyed by James Madison to start the season and beating Colorado State and Tennessee State didn't do much of anything. But they sure noticed that 45-31 went over Miami. The defense stopped the run. They forced three takeaways and did it all with one of the nation's best pass rushes that's screwing its offenses up over the last three weeks. But I, I do think we need to look at it and keep it in perspective that that game was a lot about what Miami was not. I think there's a lot of credit that needs to go to what Middle Tennessee did. But let's call it what it is. That was more about Miami screwing things up. I think there's a really intriguing game on Friday, uh, Houston and Tulane uh, in um, Houston, Texas. It's going to be a lot of fun. That is uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock Central. Tulane, um, statistically relative to their schedules, fourth in the nation in total defense, fourth in the nation in pass defense, and eighth in the nation in scoring defense. Um, they're the team that played very well against Kansas State, that controlled Kansas State, something Oklahoma couldn't do. Um, but then it also is the team that didn't play well against Southern Miss. Um, well, I shouldn't say they lost the game and they had negative plays. They actually outplayed Southern Miss in terms of control, game control, but then lost control of it with the turnovers. So it's an intriguing team in that with the exception of the Southern Miss game, you look at them and you say this is pretty good in a well-coached uh, um, team in Tulane. The defense at Tulane has been – putting out has been pretty good. They get a Houston team that's making every game an adventure. Um, I, I, there, there's not a more penalized team in the country than Houston. Ten or more in every game. The pass defense is non-existent. Um, for Houston, the offense is working. It struggled and lost to Texas Tech, but the passing game was accurate over the last two weeks against Kansas and Rice, and the running game is starting to perk up. It's disappointing in how they played, considering the high expectations. Many looked, and I, I did, as the most talented group of five team this year, but they're not the best team. They're too mistake-prone. They're not particularly well coached, and they're not going to survive and achieve that, you know, New Year's Six Bowl game. Um, I think Tulane's defense is pretty good, but it's not doing enough to generate a pass rush of taking the ball away. I think this is going to have to be – another Houston flop game where they turn the football over, play dumb. And if they do, then I absolutely think that Houston can lose this game. But Houston needs to wake up. They've got talent, group of live level talent. In fact, they've got talent that would match up well in the Big 12. But I think this is a pivotal stretch. And I'm not advocating anything. I'm just going to say that if Houston's going to do damage in the Big 12, and I'm telling you, they got the facilities, They've got the recruiting base, and they've got the talent right now to be a player immediately in the Big 12. But coaching is holding them back big time. Um, Tulane's a little confusing. Houston's more confusing. This is a Houston team that's got a lot of potential, and this defensive line has got to get in the backfield. They should win this game, should win this game decisively, but I don't know what to make of it uh, other than – that Houston is a uh, an underachieving team. San Diego State, Boise State, quickly, um, as that game's in Boise on Friday night at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I know a lot of you are going to be watching that. This Boise passing game is not working well. The running game isn't doing much better than that. San Diego State's got massive problems. Uh, the defense did its part in its win over Toledo last week, but it hadn't been exactly a brick wall. So is this – Taylor Green ready to handle what San Diego State defense is about to bring. He's the new starting quarterback at uh, Boise State. He's, uh, he's 6'6". He can move. So I'm curious to see what they can do. Can Boise get back on track here? They are certainly a been a disappointment in how they played this year. And also UNLV on Friday is playing New Mexico in Allegiant Stadium. That's 11 p.m. Eastern time start. 
Um, New Mexico with the loss against LSU couldn't get it done at all. Didn't even make a dent. Big time mistakes, turnovers. There's a pass rush. Um, it's going to see what they're going to get done here. The reps are playing pretty well. Um, pretty steady passing game. Um, the offense has been a really a, a surprise overall. Um, so we'll see. I think that this is a game in which UNLV at home should be able to get done. They're a big favorite. we got more details on this one over at LandryFootball.com. We're also interested in following Cincinnati at Tulsa and curious to see if Cincinnati's line of scrimmage advantage in this game will win out over Tulsa's playmaking ability at receiver. SMU at UCF is another intriguing game. Um, certainly we're going to have to watch again for the weather on how that's going to play out. But this is a, a nice matchup. It's a tough place to play. Lots of offense in this game. Navy and Air Force I'm particularly interested in. Saturday in the early uh, slot, uh, always looking to see who can do the best job of defending the option play defensively. It's going to be key. So those are some of the a group of five games. We're going to have more of uh, the breakdowns and of other games breakdowns on the group of five over at uh, LandryFootball.com. So make sure that you subscribe there, check that out, and get detailed film room analysis of all the games uh, in the group of five and all the college conferences, as well as the NFL, give you a coaching and scouting viewpoint on that. We'd also like to remind you to subscribe, like, and share the Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel, as well as the Landry Football Podcast Network. Subscribe, link, and share. Hey, it's always great talking football with you. Group of five, every conference we got for you here on the Landry Football Podcast Network. Enjoy the games. We'll break it down for you here on the Landry Football Podcast Network and on LandryFootball.com. So long, everybody.